Hi, I'm Joe Saunders of Miniature Landscape Hobby, and in this episode, we're going to talk about AK Interactive's range of weathering pencils. Most importantly, we're going to talk about when to use them, why you would want them, and how to use them. Every once in a while, you find a product that is an absolute game changer. Something that allows you to access new levels of ability in refining your art. This might sound a little dramatic, but for me, weathering pencils are one of those products. Now let me be upfront about this. I'm not sponsored by AK Interactive. But you know, if you want to, AK, just give me a call. I just really love this product and want to spread the hobby joy. Now, don't let the name weathering pencil fool you. If it involves color and texture, there is a use for weathering pencils in your projects. In my work and at the scales I choose to paint at, I almost exclusively use the wet technique for application. That's where you wet the pencil and apply the paint, pencil lead. I don't know what to call it. I guess it's actually watercolor paint. Anyways, you apply it and blend or manipulate it on the model surface. I've used the pencil application dry on metallic surfaces such as tank tracks, but this area remains a bit of a mystery to me. Nevertheless, so useful are weathering pencils that these other techniques become a fertile area for future videos. And that's cool with me. You'll just have to keep your eyes peeled on the channel. So here is my process for using weathering pencils and my thoughts on how and when to use them. I'm sure there's a lot more to cover than what I handle here and I figure I'm really just scratching the surface. No pun intended. The first use I want to look at is shading. There's many ways to shade models. Pin washes, lining in, shaders, etc. But the blendability... Is that a word? I guess it is. The blendability of weathering pencils makes them great. Sometimes the area you need to shade around needs to be subtle and fade out to imply a soft shadow, not a harsh, well-defined one. I find this is a great time to break out either a black or dark brown weathering pencil. Here I have a door frame on a Gale Force 9 desert house that I want to accentuate. But I don't want deep shadows because being in the desert, we want to imply this house is in harsh, warm light. So I take my black weathering pencil and using it wet, transfer some of the black paint to the space around the door frame. I let the paint dry for a few minutes and then with a flat brush that is just barely moist, I feather the paint out away from the frame. And done. A shadow that's not too shadowy. This brings us to a very important tip that I actually found out about the hard way, and that is being watercolored base, once you lay down your weathering pencils, they're fairly easy to smudge. Once you get a nice layer down and you're going to move on to something else, always remember to seal it with varnish. Otherwise, it's just going to get rubbed off when you do the next layer. Filtering is the process of applying a general color over different paint layers to help unify them. Sometimes you want the gradient between base colors, midtones, and highlights to stand out, but usually you want something more subtle. Using the weathering pencils wet, you can get really excellent filter effects out of them that I find you would usually need enamels to achieve. 
Here we have a 1 100 scale T34 that I think has a color modulation that's too pronounced. The difference between the midtones and highlights is too great, and it makes it look washed out and unrealistic. Fortunately, this is easy to fix. I take my olive green weathering pencil and apply it wet to the surface in different blobs. Then, with my moist brush, I spread it thinly across the entire surface where the color modulation issue is. Now the tones are balanced, and it looks like everything belongs. The oil dot technique, done with, well, oil paint, is a classic for scale modelers. You use oils blended in patches into the surface of a model to imply variability in the surface properties of the model. It's not really a technique that's used in wargaming or other miniature building disciplines because oils are harder to use. Until now. Weathering pencils offer a more user-friendly solution to achieve basically the same result. Here we have a stone wall that's supposed to be built from miscellaneous rocks. In its painted state, it looks very uniform. The rocks are all the same color, and honestly, it's kind of boring. Using weathering pencils, I go ahead and fix this. I work various shades from dark brown to orange into selected rocks, and then blend them out again using a moist brush. After this is done, there's a subtle variation in a number of the stones varying the colors. Now the wall looks less uniform and decidedly a lot more natural. Best of all, no messy, smelly, slow drying oil paints are needed. The last use for weathering pencils I want to cover is the most obvious, weathering. The blendability of the pencils, and there's that word again, and their versatility by now should be well established, so I'll instead just highlight two weathering techniques that I favor. First is rust streaks. My favorite model kits are definitely tanks. Because of this, Rust is an important way to establish interest and a sense of both mass and context for the model. No rust, the vehicle is fresh off the production line or well maintained. With rust, then the subject is battle worn or had been left to the ravages of the climate. Here I've done sponge chipping on this T34. You can quite clearly see where the wear and tear is on the tank. So now I need to accentuate this with some rust streaks. Wetting my pencil tip, I draw streaks of paint under or over each chip. Now I follow up by taking my moist brush and draw strokes downward, blending the lines in the direction of gravity. By using a wetter brush, or through more thorough brushwork, you can of course make the rust as subtle or obvious as you want. The second technique I want to highlight is dust and dirt. Dirt and dust obviously are the best way to establish whether or not your vehicle has been driving around, and this really goes a long way to helping figure out the context of where the model belongs. You do this by applying any appropriate or dirt sand color with the pencil then the method is much the same as with rust. However, rather than build streaks, you can weather by stippling to make patches or blend it into an amorphous blob on surfaces like fenders and tracks where you would expect grime to build up. And boom, a perfectly weathered model. So there you have it, my guide to weathering pencils. I cannot really recommend them enough. They're great. If you've been using them all along though, then you're familiar with exactly how useful they are.
That's it for this episode. I hope you liked watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please remember that Miniature Landscape Hobbies is supported entirely by its viewers. If you would like to assist with the production, please consider joining me on Patreon. I have many levels for my Patreons to subscribe to. You can get access to the STL files I use, and even receive painting lessons or terrain. If Patreon's not your thing, then how about you head over to my Etsy store? Any purchases you might make help support the channel. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Remember to subscribe, and as always, remember to keep building life in miniature.